then I, I don't know. He he doesn't really become as effective as if you stop him from farming, if you stop him from getting levels. We saw them go up and steal the race, take the red. Very effective, you know, level one engage. They they didn't want to go after the blue, but then they allowed Fiddlesticks to go steal their red. And Fiddlesticks, he actually can counter jungle pretty quickly if he goes for the buffs. He can't go after wraiths or golems or anything like that. Or he can get the big wraith or the big golem, yeah. but not he can't really clear the whole wave. Um, so, I don't know if Nintendo can then come back and secure his jungle a little bit easier, but Fiddlesticks knew that, they, you know, Nintendo was going to go top lane and be aggressive top lane, so he knew he had the time to take that red buff. So we Maybe do even a ward. Yeah. They actually probably need a ward into their jungle to not allow Fiddlesticks to enter in the early levels. You know, they did have some fantastic wards in the bot lane, the tri rush. Mm -hmm. Fantastic ward there to prevent the early, uh, the early ganks, but still wasn't quite enough, but... By Mono banning out Leeson and Galio, let's take a look at their prior game bans. They banned out Vigar, Leona, and Morgana. Morgana is, again, a fantastic character to just steal jungle with. You just go ahead, put the pool at the Wraith camp, and just take everything. Vigar, Nijack, we, 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 we've been over this so much. Nijack, Vigar, it's a treat. It's a treat if you haven't seen it, and we may see it. Leona has been banned, so Vigar is open. And yeah. we're going to have to wait for our last ban from Curse. It will be Rise once again. But we see, you know, Curse, they do have that counter pick. And Vigar, he is more of a counter pick. You don't first pick, excuse me, Vigar, obviously. You want to have the r appropriate matchups. Unless you're um, Curse. Well, yeah, I mean, <laughs> but uh, we did see those bans. Lee Sin and Galio were just dominant in that, that last game. Just became too tanky too quickly and easily won both top and mid. They're, you know, very strong laning champions. Uh, so it'll be interesting to see where Mono goes. They could, you know, first pick Ari. She is an extremely strong pick. Just, you know, now that they don't have those counters necessarily in there, there are still a number of counters to Ari uh, champions that can do very well uh, against her. But um, she's generally a pretty safe champion. We'll see. They might go with Morgana. Morgana would be I extremely, like you know, strong champion for their team. Give them a lot of early control. And actually, the early Janna pick. So they still love Janna. Pixel, I'm, I'm kind of curious. I'd like to see him play more supports. I don't know if that's... You know, just that he's really comfortable with Janna. I mean, Janna is his comfortable area. Yeah. Or if it's that he struggles with some of the other supports. But uh, we'll have to see. What we see in a lot of games that Mono has played, the enemy team allows them to continue with their Janna Graves combo bottom. That's Mono's bread and butter right now, is that bot lane. And if teams will just give it to him, you might as well take it. So Alstar and Nocturne coming in from Curse. So a little bit a little bit of a, a change coming in from Curse. So Nocturne, wonderful ult again. We have we have that ambush style ult coming in from over the wall. So we may see we may see a little bit of a change up, but we may also see uh, Nautilus come back in too, possibly top lane this time. Top lane Nautilus? Top lane Nautilus. I've seen I, it. I've seen it before, but it's I, it, it really you need a, a good matchup. It, you're right. It, yeah. it, I've, I have seen it in some competitive play. I you're just such a wishful thinker. You're I, you're sitting here. You're like a, was, a kid. You know, I day before Christmas, you want to open up the Nautilus. N64. We saw it. We saw them play Nautilus. I'll I'll do the Nintendo 64 voice later. Oh, actually, there we Mono go. just go might just go ahead and take it out from under them. No, I mean, I mentioned Nautilus because we've seen Curse play Nautilus quite a bit recently. Yeah, no, that's true. I mean, it's he a is, comfort zone. He is a very strong champion. I, I don't know that he's... We have actually seen Curse play him top lane as well, like you said. Yeah. Um, I, I, He's not the strongest top lane. I think we saw Dignitas play him top lane uh, also. Mm. Um, yeah, but, but that, well, not, not too much success there. Or no, <laughs> actually, Dominate played him in the jungle, but... I, I don't know, you really need to fit a team around them, and right now we're seeing with Curse, Alistar and Nocturne, they, they were comfortable with those champions. Those aren't champions that you counter very easily, so it, it does allow them to have these counter opportunities. They have their top lane open, they have their mid open, they're actually going to pick Galio top, so their mid is open where they have that counter pick. Uh, yeah, so Gangplank going top lane, Tristana bot lane with Alistar. We've seen the heal ignite from Tristana's before. So that's going to be an incredibly aggressive bot lane. So it looks like Curse going to continue the aggressive push going into game number two. It worked for them in game one. It may work for them again. We'll have to see, but Mono still has two more picks available for them right now. More, see, there's no Morgana pick. Morgana I, would be fantastic, but Curse is waiting. Yeah. They waited for the AP mid as their last pick. So we'll, we'll have to see what they're going to do 
in the light of that, but I'm worried about that This is actually one pick away from the exact same team, I think, as the um, uh, the Korean team. I can't remember their name. It was like uh, Zil Zenix. Zilkis. Zenix? Zenix? Oh, that Storm. was, you're right, that was it. Zenix Storm. Zenix Storm, yeah. Um, if they went another AD, and we, we are seeing, you know, we have an aggressive melee team from Curse that needs to engage, and Nintendude on Nautilus, he can prevent those uh, engages very easily. He's that upfront tank. They have tons of disables as their team, so you know, it, as far as team fights cons uh, control is concerned, they can you know just sustain disable the entire game. And then Warwick is going to be an extremely strong top lane. Actually, has a slight advantage over Gangplank. Warwick top lane is a force to be reckoned with, but we also have Karthus in the mid against Morgana. And you know what? I think. Uh, Morga and once again, Morgana sticking with the cleanse. Paradoxical is getting a little, a little on edge. I think he's a little bit worried. And but the thing is that there isn't really a whole lot to. I mean, we have the fear from Nocturne, but it's it's not an instant fear. We do have also the slow from Karthus. We got slows from Gangplank, and 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 Alstar does all of his junk, but. I'm not sure if cleanse is going to be the right choice. Well, the the big thing is they don't want to get anyone picked off in team yeah. fights. If Morgana was picked off, there goes all their magic damage. There goes a t you know ton of fight control. Uh, but if she can you know be safe in there, you know cleanse the fear, maybe cleanse of pulverize from Alistar, Though it is a knockoff. Oh, no, so. we got okay. We got the ignite. The, it was it oh, okay. was switched. So I'm I'm kind of I'm yeah. You're right. That, that is a much better call. <laughs> it's a with much the better call to grab the. But we are in, and we're gonna see how game two carries out yeah I'm, I'm kind of curious what's uh what kind of route we'll see from nautilus because i i would expect he's going to go blue first he does need that mana yes um i i don't know that curse has in a strong enough team to force a level one engage we do have janna uh we do have morgana corky has a ton of fight uh potential level ones just has a lot of nice little damage his phosphorus bomb revealing the area as well so they are probably going to sit back and both teams just play defensively have a normal jungle game so right now, Mono's actually just kind of playing ring around the tower right now. Not quite sure where they're feeling to go, but Curse, they actually have the nice point defense going on. Every opening is covered. They just want to make sure that Mono does oh, not wow. get the invade in. I hope this is what we're seeing because right now, Pobelter is edging towards that bottom lane, and we do have Cop and Elements going top, and yeah. so there is a good lane matchup. Gangplank, he can farm fairly effectively against a range lane. Uh, Corky and, you know, Janna is an extremely aggressive lane. He will want to allow them to push to the tower, but he will have his parlay for farm. Warwick, not so much. He's basically going to be at the whim of Tristana and Alistar in that top lane. It's going to be an extremely difficult for lane for him if they decide to go up with this matchup. And I'm just, I'm just, I'm just listening to Nintendo taunt. I, I love it when when pros do that. They just get their taunts in, like especially when uh, Dyrus is playing a South by Southwest. That was fun. Or even better yet, if they get the kill and then they stand over the dead body. <laughs> it's dude, that's, that's the, the low equivalent of the of the tea bag. I wow. Like so uh, we actually have Crumbs going after early red. He is going to be extremely strong as far as ganks are concerned. Um, I'm expecting that Alistar is going to go top lane, but Tristana will have good lane control against Warwick if Alistar decides to roam. And Elements was one of those, you know, kind of progenitors of the roaming kind of meta with CLG, so uh, that would be interesting to see as well. And now roaming after and M5. Oh, yeah, here we go. Cop going right. top lane, and Zion Spartan's going to realize, ah, uh, crap, this is... The same stuff we were dealing with in game one. Now what do we do? And not only did they swap the lanes, but they gave Gangplank the early blue buff so he can just sit there and yes, spam parlays all day. He can spam his heals now that he's level two. Uh, we'll have a lot of lane control. He still needs to let them push to the tower, but yeah. it is going to be fairly safe for him. And Elements, Elements coming, coming up in. top. Here we go. Zion Spartan, he's a little bit He's got out. to expect that he's there, though. He's got, he's got to think. He's got to think, but he doesn't quite know for sure. And now Elements coming in. We're getting the Pulverize in. He's level 1. He does not have the headbutt. Ignite going down. Zion Spartan, the auto text should be able to do it. And Cop gets the first wow. blood on an unsuspecting Zion I, Spartan. I, I'm just... Zion Spartan, You where's Alistar? You know Alistar is roaming to some degree. And we are seeing a roaming Alistar. You have to expect that he's coming top lane. You're so vulnerable early levels as Warwick. Oh, right now in Paradoxal is actually element. The cow is coming down in mid. Paradoxal does not have the shield. Got a second point in Tormented Soil. But uh, right now, 
Elmis is going to go ahead and back off and possibly get another attempt on top lane. He's wandering back up. And Nintendo waiting for the raves, and Crumbs is actually uh, around to say hi. Paradoxal and <laughs> the smites coming in from both jungles. Dueling smites. Dueling smites. <laughs> and uh, Zion Spartan, once again, he's pushed to towers. Not going to be able to do a whole lot. Crumbs retreating back into his I'm, own jungle. I'm kind of wondering if we'll see a tower dive top with Nocturne. I mean, you kind of don't want to risk those early deaths, but yeah. they definitely have the damage output. If Nocturne yeah. came in, uh, if Alistar tanked it for a little bit, they could just burst him down. So Nautilus coming towards that top lane, I think it, he probably is expecting something like that and wants to be able to defend his teammate. But you know what? The river is warded. They know Nintendo's coming in, but you know what? They don't care. They're just going to go ahead and stick it out and see what they can do. There's no vision coming in. We have the vision now. Pulverize comes down. Are we going to focus on? Are we going to focus on spring in? But the teleport from Pole Belter coming in to help join the fight. We have four members of Curse in the top lane pushing back Mono. Will Nintendo die as well? I think he just might. And yes, he does. Will Curse just push his tower? Yeah, I think I, they, no, actually, they, they'll they probably. Take it? I would expect they'll. They can take it if they want to. I but think they might. I think they'll probably leave it up because they have Warwick at a disadvantage right now. Uh, they could push it if they want to really roam as a team early, and we actually see. Uh, we'll, we'll see whether or not they're just damaging it or pushing it. Corky and Janna, in the meantime, uh, pushing down that tower a little bit. So. You know, Pobelt are missing out on some CS, but the early aggression from Curse is just extremely effective. Uh, I think they might actually be taking this tower. I, I don't know. I'm kind of curious. <laughs> hey, hey, you take down the tower, your team gets gold. It's, I mean, granted, you know, you don't have as much, uh, you know, your lane presence is altered by not having your opponent able to go back to that tower to safety. It, it's a nice little psychological mind game. Sometimes you may just want to leave it up just so you keep your opponent in lane, you give them that false sense of security. It's like, it's like, I may have a tower with like 100 health, but it still, it still shoots stuff, it's still good. And it's the reliable. Big thing, the big thing with you know leaving the tower up early is that it's going to push the lane back to that mid position. We see top yes. lane, uh, it is sitting mid. If Warwick tries to come up in CS, it is going to push to the other side, at which point Tristana can just completely zone Warwick out of lane. So if they were able, to, if they were going to get rid of that tower, then the lane would push back for Warwick. Warwick would be able to farm at that second tower and just hold the lane there. And here we see an aggressive gank. Top lane once again. Warwick is going to come down and drop a ward. But Nocturne may be coming up from behind the tower. We'll have to see whether or not he goes through with this. Oh, he crumbs his game position. He flashes in over the tower. Tries to get the fear on Zion Spartan, but he's taking tower hits the entire time. Will he be able to get away? Yes, he will. But Zion Spartan and the Karthus ult from space. Abusive in that bot lane. Whoa. I, wow. And that's that's their strength. They know that you know they can just sit up their top lane. Uh, Mono not doing anything about it. They you really need you need to counter gank teams when they're trying this kind of aggressive stuff. But then the concern is if you start putting pressure up top lane, Curse then transitions to bottom and has a free dragon. We actually see they are pushing down this tower now. Uh, just going to take that early map control. And Pobelter is generally pretty fine in this bottom lane. He's fairly comfortable. He is behind on CS, but uh, with the ganks for his team, he does get the early levels. And Cor Zig almost going to be able to pick him up, but uh, we do have the heal from Pobelter. So once again, just perfectly safe in this bottom lane. He eats some oranges, and he's going to be fine. He gets a little bit of his health back. But uh, yeah, that's the thing. When you switch lanes, when you do 2v1s, top and bot, the towers are such huge objectives. And uh, right now, Curse is actually winning that. But... We have the recall, and we have Tristan and Alstar going now bot lane with the switch to defend this tower, to keep it up, and to have the presence later on for Dragon when those engagements start to happen. So that is a very good call from Curse, getting the lanes nice and equalized back to normal, and Zion Spartan is actually trying to AFK farm as much as he can, but when he got a pirate around, it may not be that safe. I, I just love the prospect of this as a preview of what we're going to see out of Curse at IPL4. And yes. we have Curse has been an extremely aggressive team recently. They've, you know, made a lot of different changes, oh, a lot of different strategy ideas, and headbutt actually Elements, pulverize. Pixel's going down. From the Dragon Pit, Elements gets the Headbutt Pulverize. Pixel's trying to get away, does use the Flash. Cop gets into Pursuit, and the Gang playing ult there just for the insurance. And Pixel yeah. goes down the Cop. But uh, going back to what I was saying, you know, we have seen Elements playing Yorick in that bottom lane. We have seen some kind of 
I don't know, experimentation from Curse, and this is an extremely aggressive comp. They are, you know, trying the strategy. There's the headbutt from Elements, and then Crumbs is going to come in, but Paradoxical's here. He does block the ultimate with his shield, so they're chasing him down. An easy kill, and then Paradoxical has to get out of there, so this will be a free dragon for Curse. Curse is picking apart Mono in every aspect right now. They just completely destroyed top. They're picking everyone out from the jungle. Nintendo had nowhere to go. They're gonna grab this dragon. They're gonna have an easy 4K lead. We're not even 10 minutes in yet. This is insane. This is absolutely insane. Who's getting all the, every, everyone's getting a share. Everyone's getting a piece of the pie. So everyone on Curse has an edge on every member of Mono oh, and Zig. Zig being caught out the pulverize and the headbutt, keeping him against the wall. Tristana's ult but is up. The elements, though, is actually getting chunked out a little bit too far, and Cop has to run away. Mono actually got the better of that battle, so I think uh, elements and the Cop were a little bit too overzealous there. But That's the, actually a little bit surprising. Yeah. I think that uh, Cop probably could have ulted Corky into the wall. It would act as a stun when you hit that barrier uh, rather than moving. Throw off the ultimate, throw off the ignite, Maybe pick up the quick kill. I think the concern was if they didn't, then he's kind yeah. of committing himself and maybe giving Zig a double kill, which is really what you don't want to do. So I'm uh, actually just going to sit back, and we will have a Cop tower for Mono. Cop needs to get out of there right now. Otherwise, once that tower goes down, he's the next target. But uh, I, was, I was wondering, I was waiting for that ultimate from Elements, but he wasn't quite 6 yet. He was about 60% of the way. So he didn't have that ultimate. He did not have the damage reduction. And, uh, and he just got trapped. He just got trapped there and had to take the damage from Zig. Pobolter now, he's, he's now free to roam wherever he wants, but there are awards, defensive wards from Mono. The binding from Paradoxical does miss, so Pobolter's going to go ahead and place some offensive wards. Right oh, we there. have Elements jumping on top of Corky. There's the quick kill, and now Pixel is definitely out of position, so yep. we will have the Karthus Karthus Ultimate as well, and, and Pixel will probably go down. One more attack. Oh, Elements is going to be able to Elements. get the headbutt at the very least. But Nintendo flashes in, trying to get the damage he needs right there on Cop and Cop. Rocket the jumps The kill away. actually refreshed the rocket jump so that wow. Cop could get out of there. Elements trying to save the kill for his carry. Realize he need to just take it real quick. And now we have Nocturne coming down as well. Kerps, uh, crumbs and Elements are here. There's the headbutt against the wall. The Pulverize. We do have a teleport in from Warwick. So they are going to have to back out of there. We'll see if Nintendo tries to stall them a yeah, little crumbs. bit. There's the pull, but they're going to have to back out. They just don't have enough damage. They really don't. But uh, Tristana has gone back. She is on her way. Paradoxicals floating around as well. So I think now like we're starting to see Mono realize, like, guys, we're being picked apart here. We need to get serious. We need to do some stuff like lane switches, getting Zig and Pixel up top lane to stop this never-ending push from Poe Belter. And, right, and actually uh, Paradoxical is pushing up mid as well. So I think now, now we're seeing Mono rally. We're seeing them rally around the rest of the team to realizing they have to switch up their game. But I don't know, it may be a little bit too late. I don't know. We'll have to see what Curse does. They're continuing the counter jungling, continuing the aggression. Nintendo finds Crumbs trying to be a little bit of a sneak, and he may actually pay the price for it. Spell Shield goes down, but it does get popped. He does ult, trying to reduce the vision. He does flash away, but there's a ward in that push. Paradox oh, comes in down. with the Morgana ult. The Ignite will finish the job. But Morgana's ultimate's down, so we'll see. Curse has to back out of here. There's the pull onto Cop, and then we have the Warwick ultimate as well. So Cop is going to go down, actually able to just barely jump out of there. Pobelter slowing him down a little bit. Elements with the ultimate, they just don't have enough damage, and that's the concern when you give up so many kills early, whether or not you can take down the enemy team. And Gangplank, you know, really strong late game. He is getting pretty tanky here. There's another pull from Nintendo, and we do have the slow from Pixel, but once again, they don't have enough sustained damage. So Cop, can he get some damage uh, because they just don't have a means of getting in on him? There's the bind on the Pobelter. He's very close to going down. He flashes away. Cop able to pick up the kill onto... Um, Warwick. Uh, Zion Spartan, and then they're actually still oh. chasing on the rest of them. We do have another bounce on Cop. If Elements can get in with the headbutt, Pulverize is going to back up. But uh, just, I don't know, no damage output from Mono. They, I mean, they have the damage. It's just we have too tanky of a team from Curse now because of how many kills they got early in this game. And you know what? They could have cleaned up all the rest of that, but Cop missed the rocket jump over the wall just a little bit in the wrong position could not pursue could not finish it up but you know what curse made their point mono they're they're not winning these team fights right now that was pretty much everyone from both teams mono did not end out ahead in that at all and curse is going to go ahead and continue the push up in mid 
and now they're just going to go ahead, fall back, regroup, get everyone together, and try and maybe force another one of those team fights. And I think the concern for Mono is going to be how are they going to win fights coming into this mid game? We have Tristana with the fantastic range. She has her damage built up. They will have great tower pushing capability with the range in Tristana, and then all these disables on their team. Then we've got Karthus. He's built the early Rod of Ages, so he's going to be extremely tanky as well. Even if they kill Karthus, he's just going to sit there with all of his AoE damage. That's going to be extremely difficult for them to deal with. We actually have Crumbs being extremely aggressive, trying to come in. There's the shield, and Paradoxical is going to be able to get out of there, but in the meantime, Cop is pushing down this mid tower. Uh, we'll be able to take it the next wave because Alistar is coming down here. We'll see whether or not Mono can engage a fight. So, for Mono in team fights, what would be the number one suggestion for them right now? Should they focus anyone specific? Is their approach wrong? What should they be doing? Well, the big thing with their team is they have kind of an early snowball team and they fell behind as that early snowball team. They need to be able to pick up kills with Warwick and Morgana with that suppression you know, try and pick people out of position. And if they can do that now, if they can pick people out off uh, out of position, then, you know, that'll definitely work to their benefit. We probably want to see an Oracles on Elements, but Elements actually doesn't like getting Oracles. I, I kind of agree with him to a degree. He's very aggressive with his Vision Wards, usually. Uh, he gets a lot of pink wards to counter out the enemy's wards, but, you know, not putting in that big investment towards Oracles. So, as a result, Mono is going to want to be really aggressive with warding, Try and get map control advantage from Vision, oh, and then see Zig. if they can pick people off. Zig is alone in bot lane. We got Elements coming back around to see if we can't get that last bit of hurt we need. Ward goes down in the bush to make sure that we can see him. Ignite goes down on Zig, but the Karthus ult might be able to finish up the job. Pulverize come in. We got the heal, but Pulverize here to finish the job with a parlay, and now Paradoxical is out of position. The rest of Mono came to try and help, but they're just a little bit too late to the party, and now they have no choice but to run and give this dragon to Curse. Yeah, I mean, Corky trying to farm aggressively. They really need Corky to stay farmed for this game to kind of continue for Mono. They do have a lot of disables, so if they can keep Corky alive in team fights, they'll, you know, be in a good position, but now, because of how strong Nocturne is, we actually have him ulting on top of Nintendo. Nintendo is going to flash away. But because of how strong Nocturne is at this point, how strong all of Curse is, uh, Nocturne can just dive on Corky and not really be concerned about dying. So uh, we have a snare onto Elements, but not going to be able to pick up that kill. The pull from Nintendo does not connect, and mid tower will fall to Curse. And once and we have all of Curse here in mid, Nocturne not too far behind. Mono is now all in the mid. This is now just turning into a full 5v5 brawl in any lane. They're just moving as cohesive units, but Mono desperately trying to catch up wherever they can and not being able to do it. In the meantime, Curse just taking all the objectives they need to. They've got the mid tower, they grabbed a dragon earlier, and they're winning these team fights. I'm not, I, Mono is just, over time, just, just losing it to this massive snowball running down the hill, and they, they're, we may be hitting the point of no return very soon. Yeah, Corky is farming fairly effectively despite all the pressure that Curse has. Uh, that's one thing, you know, Tristana, she's been kind of running around trying to get kills. Yeah, and she's, so, she's succeeding, though. She's yeah, no, definitely exceeding. Um, I don't know, it, if we see, once we have the Zonias from Morgana, that'll be the point where we'll see what Mono can do. Uh, if they can have a really aggressive engage, try and pick up some kills, that would be fantastic. I think after we see the uh, Infinity Edge from Tristana, we might see an early Quicksilver Sash, because that's really the only way that Mono's going to win a fight, is if they can get that suppression from Warwick, or get that ultimate from Morgana onto one of these key figures like Karthus or Tristana. And Tristana, you know, once she goes down, she's not going to be sitting there dealing damage to you in, you know, the afterlife. <laughs> Unlike Karthus right, right there, who's got, you know, that is his passive. Once he dies, he can actually still do a whole bunch of stuff before his uh, death timer actually starts to tick. He can get his ult off, and all that mana is free while he's in that little death period. So we've got a lot of damage output from Curse right now, 17 minutes into the game. Mono's going to try and push up this mid tower, but all that lay waste, all those skills, just going to go ahead and clear the waves of minions, preventing them from doing so. Curse is in a fantastic position right now, and they're just going ahead and working to that advantage. Yeah, it will be extremely difficult for them to push down this tower, but that's what Mono wants to do. They want to 
Yanlo kind of force Curse out of position. We might see them switch towers. I don't know if they're going to aggressively try oh, and push this. Right now, Zion Spar is actually running from behind the tower. Can we get the ult in on someone? Who's he going to pick? He doesn't know. He's a little bit of a confusion state here. He doesn't know quite who to ult, but Crumbs does come in with the ult. Karthus ult going down. Janna ult getting a little bit of heal, but it's not going to be enough to save Paradoxical. And now we're in a full retreat from Mono. Cop comes in with the rocket jump. Spartan does have to flash away. And Curse is going to continue with this push. All five of their members are still alive. We got some, We got the howls going off, though. We know Nijack is a little bit low. And the ult from Warwick is just... There, we saw nothing. He was going around the tower to try and get the jump, and nothing happened. Yeah, and Curse can just slowly pressure Mono at this point. Uh, they are going to take this blue, probably go with bot lane. We do have the pull on the cop, but just not enough damage to follow it up. And now Element's coming in. We'll get the Pulverize after the headbutt, and Nintendude is going to go down, throws off his ultimate. We do have Nijaki pretty close to going down, but they are all going to be uh, okay there, just going to back up and continue to pressure their advantage. And Crumbs takes the Wolves. The end. Uh. <laughs> and that's the way it was. And that's the way it was, and that's the way it will be. <laughs> that, I know. I, I, I had to. I had to make a nice little comment. It was like everyone's team fighting in mid. What's Crumbs doing? Oh, no, nothing huge. I'm just taking the walls. Don't, don't mind me. No, I enjoyed it. <laughs> and you, you, you were in like the little uh, Walter Cronkite with it, so it was. Yeah, it, it was, worked. It was good. It worked. We made it work. <laughs> but yeah, we. Yep. Um, I don't know. Just too much damage from all of Curse right now. Too tanky. We do have a uh, Giant's Belt going onto Gangplank now, so he's going to be extremely difficult to handle. Tristana has all of that DPS. She probably could be a little bit higher if she had, you know, a little bit more farm, but all those kills really adding up. Um, I don't know, it's... It it seems like an insurmountable task for Mono right yeah. now, but we have seen some extremely aggressive Baron tactics from Mono. Uh, a lot of interesting stuff. It'll be... I don't know, I, I'd, I'd like to see a comeback. I mean, you know, hey, who wouldn't? That would be one of the greatest comebacks ever. It would be pretty impressive, and if Mono can actually get, if they can get a Baron, or if they can get a Baron Steel, they have a shot. It's right. nothing guaranteed, but it'll definitely help them big time. They just need to get the engage they need, and they need to be able to catch someone off guard. Because right now, they don't know it, but they're actually, they could engage a 5v4 here by, drag, by a Baron. Because Tristana is alone in a bot, and we may actually be seeing that right here. Mono chasing down Pobelter and Elements chasing them away from the Baron Pit. And Karthus in mid with Paradoxical. And the ult going down from Morgana. We're going to get the stun off on Nijaki. We're going to keep him in position. Death Parch going down and just Nijaki gets smacked right in the middle of the map. Ultimate going down for the guaranteed damage. And Crumbs comes in with the quick ult and finishes off Morgana. And we got it's a 4v2 here in mid for Mono's favor. Elements and Crumb being chased away, but that tier 1 Gangplank's tower... Gangplank's teleporting in, though. Oh, yes, he is, right in the middle of everything. Ult going down, slowing down all of Mono. Nintendo does fall, and here's Tristana. Here's Cop to save the day. We got the flash away. Warwick does go down to Nocturne. Mono has to retreat. Cop, Mono has to retreat, because Cop is here to save the They're day. They're actually going to go for Baron. And we so, got the Baron. Uh, you know... They don't really want to pressure Baron when they know Mono's up because if Mono does get that Baron steal, there's really no need for it. You're so far ahead, but yeah. the free Baron here will allow them to just continue those pushes down mid. They won't have to be too much con uh, concerned about any poke from Morgana. Janna going to try oh, and stall Pixel. a bit, but Janna is definitely going if to get down here. If Pixel steals, this is going to be the best steal in the world. Will we be able to get it out? Tornado coming down. We have vision. There's a pick board. No, the tornado's just a little bit too late, and Pixel will pay the price for it. Maybe oh, not. Wow. Whoa, look at that flat. Well, Crumbs, Crumbs is here. Him, oh, ho, ho, the Q from Crumbs finishes the job. Yeah, and with all that gold, with the Baron, they are going to be able to pressure down this mid, and they do have a really strong team at pressuring towers. Gangplank coupled with Tristana. Tristana has the range. I believe this is probably a surrender. That there is it a is. Surrender vote. Curse winning game number two, 2-0 in their series against Mono. GG.